Maine makes some environmental history today. With the help of a backhoe, the Kennebec River is freed from the Edwards Hydroelectric Dam in Augusta. The river flows free, the dam soon will be no more. We'll talk about it on Maine Watch. For all the people of Maine, this is Maine Watch, Maine's only statewide issues and debate program. Good evening and welcome to Maine Watch. I'm Don Kerrigan. We're coming to you tonight from the banks of the Kennebec River, overlooking what has been for 160 years the Edwards Hydroelectric Dam here on the Kennebec. But after today, the Edwards Dam is an obstacle to the Kennebec River no more. The dam was breached today by man on purpose, ending more than 160 years of blocking the Kennebec River to upstream passage of fish. This really has been a historic day in a number of ways, a cause for celebration by many environmental and conservation organizations, not just in Maine, but around the country. And the air of celebration was very real earlier today here in Augusta. Summer roads by summer streams Ride in all the dreams And the good times always start on summer roads it looked a little bit like an early morning picnic or the start of a carnival of some kind. People with lawn chairs and cameras buying souvenirs, all there to celebrate the removal of the Edwards Hydro Dam. There were a few protesters on hand, people claiming that this is not enough to uh, clean up or completely free the Kennebec and other rivers. But by and large, people were celebrating. They were very happy to see this dam being removed to join in the ceremony and to hear from Governor King, Secretary of the Interior Bruce Babbitt and others say what an important day for Maine this really is. I think we also should acknowledge that this is not all going to be easy. The upstream section of this river for the next four or five years is going to be ugly. There's going to be mud flats where there was water. There's going to be exposed who knows what? Jimmy Hoffa, who knows what's up there? But in time, nature is going to reassert itself, and we are going to see the benefits of a free-flowing river for an additional 17 miles. Rivers flow through our lives. They flow through the lives of generations. And rivers flow from the past, bringing memories and associations rich in meaning. But of course, rivers are also flowing into the future. And as we look toward the future, what we are doing today is an act of creation, an act of restoration, a statement about our capacity to honor and respect God's creation, the sacramental cause. This was at least the third time Secretary of the Interior Babbitt has been in Maine working on the Edwards Hydro Dam issue, and he admitted that when he first took office it was not something he wanted to tackle, but at the end of his remarks he congratulated the people in Maine who've been working on this for more than 10 years. It has been a long battle, regulatory, legislative, and otherwise, for those who have wanted for more than a decade to get rid of the Edwards Dam and open the Kennebec River to more, to more fish passage for about another 17 miles upstream. Earlier this week, we spent some time on the Kennebec with two of the people who have been leading this fight. Before the Clean Water Act, I can remember at one point, there was so little flow and so much pollution that the suckers were killed. Yeah. And the fire engines took the fire hose out to wash the suckers off, the dead suckers off the banks of the river. Wow. For John Lund, attorney, fisherman, and publisher of the Maine Sportsman, the end of the Edwards Dam is the culmination of a decade-long dream. It's, uh, it's an incredible feeling when you realize that uh, this was a result of 10 years of effort to bring this about. Figure you'd get there someday. I don't think anybody thought it was a sure thing. I think we regarded it as a long shot. 
took changes of policy. It took creating vision on the part of not only elected officials, but the general public. Lund's fishing buddy and fellow river crusader is Steve Brook. He heads the Kennebec Coalition, a team of state and national environmental groups that worked for years to bring down the Edwards Dam. Is this situation with the Edwards Dam, the combination of factors, really unique, or is this the start of a trend towards taking out a lot of dams, do you think? It's a little bit of both. Uh, Edwards is really unique. It's, it's a unique river. It's a unique site on the river. And it's a, a place where the benefits are really very clear that uh, the benefit is for fisheries as opposed to operating this as a dam today. Uh, but at the same time, I think people nationwide are paying much more attention to their rivers. And they're involved and they understand that uh, dams do have a major negative impact on aquatic ecosystems. So. Where, the ha where there are dams, we need to look at what the cost of that dam is in the environment and what the benefit of that dam is for society. In a way, it's a matter of timing. The Kennebec River, once a polluted and uninviting waterway, is now remarkably clean. Fish have returned in great numbers, and people have followed. The city of Augusta has rediscovered its riverfront. The Edwards Dam used to be a cornerstone of the local woolen and paper mills and the jobs that went with them. But times change. The Kennebec Coalition, with help from the state, convinced the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission that the Edwards Dam no longer made economic sense. After long negotiations, the state took over the dam. As part of a complex deal, Bath Ironworks and owners of other Kennebec River hydro dams are paying most of the bills. The city of Augusta gets money from the Edwards Corporation and from the state for economic and riverfront development. John Lund and Steve Brook say that in this case, it all worked out. There was a time when this dam provided jobs for as many as 1,400 workers. But that mill is gone, those jobs are gone. It, it can't generate a significant amount of power, and it does a lot of damage. And so when you balance the benefit and the cost this one comes out in, really in favor of taking this dam out and restoring the fishery. And it sounds like everyone involved with this project is quite confident that there's going to be this huge influx of fish and other critters in there. All you have to do is stand here below the dam when the fish are in, and they're, they're just milling about waiting to go further up. But not everybody is happy. Some owners of property above the dam wonder what this will do to their land when the river level drops. Gary Brown is town manager of Vassalboro. His family owns land on the river. There's not a great deal of property owners that are affected. The ones that are affected, however, uh, I have not heard anybody who supports it. I think it's, if it's not unanimous opposition, it's certainly close to it. A lot of the people who are supporting the dam removal talk about the Kennebec River becoming a world-class fishery, world-class recreational attraction. <laughs> That's what they're saying and, and it's, uh, it's great that they're looking forward to using other people's land for their recreation. Uh, there's, there's just something dis disquieting about that I think. Uh, and what, what makes it a little more uh, dis disquieting is they really never approached uh, the, this community and said well what do you think? Is this something that you want to have happen or is this something that you don't want to have happen? Uh, we were left out of any discussions on whether or not it should take place. And, and like you say, now people are, are excited about the potential of going across private property to access these great fisheries that are going to take place. And fisherman Troy Hill, launching his boat in Augusta, worries that removing the dam might not be good. I don't know a lot about it, but uh, I don't like the idea of it because I don't think it's going to help the fish in any. Really? Yeah. They claim it's going to. Well, we'll see. <laughs> But this generally seems to be a decision a lot of people like. Fishing guide Mike Seeley approves. Well, it should be better for the breeding for the fish and uh, overall fishing in general. A lot more, 17 miles more ground to, to breed on. Yeah. And Steve Brook and John Lund believe the improvements for fish will also be good for people. From a society yeah, point of view, um, why do you think it's important to take this dam out? because at the present time, the benefits of this dam goes to a very limited number of people. Uh, 
the owners of the dam, and once they made a deal with the city of Augusta, the city got some benefit. But the river really doesn't belong to either the Edwards Manufacturing or the city of Augusta. It belongs to all the people of Maine, and they should have the opportunity to enjoy the benefits too. And let's give it a try. So with the ringing of a ceremonial bell that signaled the backhoe, and incidentally cracking a bottle of champagne on the bucket, the temporary coffer dam was pulled away and the Kennebec River was open to flow around the Edwards Dam. The Edwards Dam, as you can probably see behind us, looks a whole lot different than it did just a few hours ago. Water does not go over it anymore. Just around it, the Kennebec River is flowing on downstream. Joining us to talk about this are three people who have been closely involved with the Edwards Dam issue for a long time. Laura Rose Day uh, oversees watershed policy for the Natural Resources Council of Maine, one of the member groups of the Kennebec Coalition. Okay. Evan Rickert is director of the Maine State Planning Office and, uh, as Governor King said, sort of the broker, I guess, of the, uh, of the overall deal that, uh, that brought, it, brought us to today. And Margaret Bowman uh, represents American Rivers from Washington, D.C., a national environmental group that focuses on rivers all over the country. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Laura Rose Day, I'll start with you. Um, from, your, from your organization's point of view, you've been working on this issue for years. Uh, John Lund, as you heard in our tape piece, said to a certain extent he was surprised that we had gotten to this point. Had you thought that it uh, would take a whole lot longer than it did to get to this point? Well, I think the, the decade plus that it took, um, during that time there were ups and downs and the, the hopes and visions that people had for whether the dam would come out, but as the, the analysis of the benefits of having a free-flowing river um, moved forward, it became clearer and clearer that it would indeed happen. And as we approach today, um, in the you know past months, I think it became clearer and clearer uh, over time that it would indeed happen, and it was the obvious, obvious thing to have happen for the river and for the communities. Mm -hmm. I this is the kind of thing that normally you'd expect a lot of pretty vocal opposition. I know there's been some opposition over the, over the years, obviously, but you seem to have won a whole lot of people over to your side. Well, again, I, I think that as people learned more about the value of the, of the river, what the river could be to the community of Augusta and other communities up and down the river into the future, um, people were, um, were persuaded uh, when they took a close look and uh, started thinking about the future rather than what the, the dam has meant to the communities in the past. Um, they started joining the chorus of folks who, who indeed wanted the, the dam uh, to come out and at least saw that it was, there was time for um, a new way of looking at the river. Evan Rickert, um, you led this for the, for the state, which has been a key player in bringing this all about. Why was this important for state government to get involved with in such a leadership way? And why, and why did everybody seem to get on board? Had the state not become involved, the state was involved uh, for a long time uh, because it manages the fishery out here. And the Department of Marine Resources and the uh, Inland Fish and Wildlife uh, and others have put together a management program along with the hydropower owners upstream that is now more than 10 years old. And so it's part of the mission of these agencies to restore a fishery. We got involved at this stage because it became very clear that uh, if we didn't, we would be headed towards a decade of litigation and that uh, one or more parties would come out of that very much injured. We thought that we could play a, a brokered role, as you described it, and uh, uh, bring enough parties together so that um, there would be as close to a win-win situation as you could get. And, and I don't pretend to say that nobody lost anything because people did lose some things, but almost everybody was held harmless or gained at least a little bit. Okay. We'll talk about some of the specifics of that in just a moment. Uh, Margaret Bowman, let me bring you in. Uh, your organization, American Rivers, is also part of the Kennebec Coalition and has been for quite a while. Yes. Um, rivers are your business. You have also uh, been successful in gaining a tremendous amount of national attention for this. Why? Well, the, 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 the whole country is really watching this uh, to see what happens. And, and I think this, this dam has really become a symbol for how our views on dam removal have changed over the last decade. When we started this concept 10 years ago, it was considered a radical concept. 
to suggest removing a hydropower dam. Today, this dam removal demonstrates that it is not just not radical, but it is reasonable and it's downright feasible as an alternative to consider when you want to restore healthy fish populations and restore rivers. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the precedent aspect um, when we touched on it briefly in the tape piece. Is this a unique set of circumstances here, as we talked with Steve Brook, or is this really, the, is this the start of a trend? I mean, are, we know that, I know that your organization is working on uh, removal of other hydro dams in some other parts of the country. Are we going to see a whole lot more of this in Maine and elsewhere? Well, every dam and every river is very different, and you have to look at each one individually. Uh, this has taken away the stigma of dam removal and has allowed it to be placed on the table for consideration when you have impacts to, uh, to a river from a dam, when you're trying to balance what is best for this river, dam removal can be considered. But there's 75,000 dams out there across the country, some hydropower, some not. Many of those dams provide benefits, and on balance, they make sense. But for those dams that don't make sense, dam re removal now can be a very viable alternative. Uh, Evan Rickard, talk for a minute about the energy aspect of this. Um, we've heard from, I've heard from a few people who have said, gee, you know, when, at a time when we know we're going to be running out of oil eventually and nuclear plants closing and uh, energy warnings in hot weather, should we be get, getting rid of a working hydro dam? Uh, your office also deals with energy policy. Yes, it's a good question. And that's something that we weighed very carefully. Uh, this dam, as it turns out, produces a very small amount of power, or produced a small amount of power, on the order of three and a half megawatts, one tenth of one percent of the state of Maine's needs alone. And when you weighed that benefit against the cost to the fishery, uh, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission concluded that uh, it was not enough of a benefit to justify it remaining. There are, fortunately, w Fortunately, we are, uh, at least for the time being, entering a period where Maine is, uh, is, is in the middle of, uh, of energy sources, natural gas, uh, for example. Uh, we have biomass plants. We have a lot of hydropower, and I'm an advocate of hydropower, and I believe that most of that should stay. So uh, the loss of this uh, dam will be more than made up, uh, even with the loss of Maine Yankee, by the natural gas generation that's going to come online. Um, and we certainly need to protect uh, the other indigenous sources uh, that we have available to us. You don't expect a, uh, a run on uh, other uh, hydro dams in Maine anytime soon? I don't. Not, not hydroelectric uh, producing dams. I think that, as Margaret said, that uh, some will probably look, be looked at closely. Uh, that is the way the law reads, that's the way the system is. In fact, there's some dams on the uh, the uh, Presumpscot River Presumpscot believe, that are being looked at now. Yes, right. uh, but on, on balance, speaking for, I, I think, this administration, we are supporters of hydropower as an important renewable indigenous resource that, while it has impacts, um, does not pollute the air mm -hmm. and gives us uh, uh, some stability in terms of foreign uh, sources of uh, oil, so on balance. But there, this is a unique situation. There may be some other unique situations, but uh, on balance, we support hydropower. Uh, Laura Rose Day, let's talk about the environmental part and what what you what you think can happen here on the Kennebec River because of this. Um, we've heard a lot of talk about how this is going to be great great things for fishing. Uh, for everybody, those all those people who aren't interested in fishing. Why should they care that this is happening? Well, in addition to um, all of the fish, which sh sh really aren't of interest to folks, simply be people who fish, but also because they're a part of the natural heritage of this region. I mean, there are sturgeon and Atlantic salmon that have uh, basically bumped up against this dam and sat ready to, to pass um, beyond this dam uh, for 162 years. And uh, there are some great uh, writings on Nathaniel Hawthorne watching sturgeon throw themselves at the dam. And that, that's a part of history as well as a part of, um, of our human history as well as a part, as a part of our biological heritage. Pretty interesting to think, though, that, that that's been there so long that Nathaniel Hawthorne would have seen it. That's right, absolutely. <laughs> and um, so, so I don't think it's an issue just for people who fish. And it's also an issue for people who want to uh, turn toward a free-flowing river rather than um, an impoundment, which is really not what a river is. Mm -hmm. Yet, of course, uh, you're not going to have a free-flowing river above here, uh, well, up here a ways, but beyond, say, the Waterville for a long, long time, are you? 
That's right, and there are, there are logical uh, junctures at which um, each dam uh, can be looked at in terms of what role it ought to play into the future. It used to be that a FERC dam like this one basically uh, got relicensed, and that was the end of it. And there was an assumption that because a dam was there that it was valuable. And the fact is not all dams are valuable. Some are, some aren't. And what this moment in history today represents is a new window to looking at things uh, quite differently and um, a lot of benefits that uh, we, we, we may not even be able to guess at now. But there's tourism value, uh, value for people who take guided trips on this river. Um, you've, all day long we've been watching beautiful birds, eagles, osprey, and herons uh, flying back and forth. And that, that's a quality of life factor that truly um, is Maine. Mm -hmm. uh, part of the deal that at least raised the money to make this possible uh, includes uh, some payments from owners of, ups of hydro dams farther upstream here on the Kennebec. Um, those, uh, those dam owners will eventually have to put in fish passage. Uh, Evan Rickert, part of the, uh, the agreement yes. uh, includes uh, provisions for that. Yes. Yet there were protesters here today saying, not soon enough. Well, you know, you can't get something for nothing. And uh, the fact is, um, in order to be able to open up 17 miles of free-flowing habitat, which, by the way, is the maximum habitat for some of the species. Others need to get farther up. In order to achieve that, we needed to uh, reach a settlement with those uh, da uh, other dam owners. And what we settled on was a biological trigger. Mm -hmm. At such time as sufficient fish, American shad in particular, are below those dams, assuming certain years are hit, uh, then passage must be uh, put into put place. Put in fish ladders and such to That's right. let the fish move upstream. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the Bath Iron Works uh, portion of this where BIW is paying some money for removal and restoration here on the Edwards site in exchange for being able to fill wetlands uh, on, for its expansion. In order to... Is uh, that a, that's a trade-off too? Well, it, it, it is. It's a, it's a trade-off that, uh, that the Army Corps of Engineers looked at and the regulators they told Bath Iron Works that they would have to mitigate that damage and that they would have to find the best, most relevant, most directly uh, linked project to mitigate that impact. And they determined that removing this dam uh, would, was that direct link because it would benefit the exact same species as might be affected downriver. Margaret Bowman said, is that a good trade-off? I think it's an important trade-off and it's a very realistic trade-off. Um, there, we are not going to return our rivers to pristine states across the country. Um, it is important to have rivers produce power and have industry on, industry on it. They're there, they're going to stay. What we need to do is try to strike a balance. Allow rivers to generate power and have industrial operations and allow rivers to come back to life. Mm -hmm. And that's what we struck here and I think that's a wonderful model for around the country. Um, in terms of, of the, uh, the environmental aspects of this river, um, what, uh, how, how realistic do you think it is that we're going to see tremendous uh, resurgence of fish populations in this 17-mile uh, section of river? This has been a heavily studied issue. You can never have perfect certainty, but starting tomorrow, the fish will be able to swim upstream for the first time in 162 years, and that is going to start the restoration. There's a lot more work to be done uh, than just breaching one dam to bring fish back. But the odds are heavily in favor of a very healthy fish population in, in years to come, thanks to this effort. And I ask you the same question that I asked uh, Laura a moment ago, which is, uh, we know why, the, why fishermen are happy about this, but mm -hmm. all those uh, who are not, um, why should they be happy about it? Well, I think one of the most exciting aspects of this uh, project here is to allow Augusta to turn itself back to its river. Part of this arrangement is going to allow the city of Augusta create a, to create a city park here. Even if you don't care to fish, coming down and being able to come down into the city center and have a park overlooking a beautiful river is very important for people in the community and to bring people into this community and bring people back downtown. I was going to ask Evan Rickert that because another part of your of the package on this whole deal uh, is uh, money and programs to help Augusta do just that. Yes. Uh, was That was pretty important, I know, to uh, to the, the legislature and state government since you at, live here at least part of the time. Yes, and, <laughs> and the city of Augusta was giving up something. They uh, were getting uh, money from the dam. 
they were getting revenue from the dam and they were getting property tax revenue from the dam as well, both royalties and tax revenues. So they were losing something tangible. We had to find a way to return something uh, to the city of Augusta in order for them to uh, be comfortable with this agreement and to sign on. And, and fortunately, we were able to find that common ground. I just want to respond to the question that you've asked my okay. colleagues okay. here. Uh, and Sorry. that is that even those who don't fish or bird watch, let's say, or canoe or kayak or do the other things that directly use the river, uh, those activities generate millions of dollars and those millions of dollars find their way through the economy multifold. So somebody who never picks up a rod or never steps into a canoe is likely to feel the beneficial effects uh, of a restored river. Will the state be providing some help to Vassalboro and Sydney and maybe even some private property owners uh, above here whose land is at least being changed by this? We want to find uh, uh, ways, and we've indicated this to Vassalboro. First of all, we're, we are rebuilding the Sydney boat ramp. Um, and we have uh, talked to Vassalboro about forming a search committee to help locate um, uh, at least carrying sites, if not ramp sites, uh, into the river so that those members of the public that want to make use of the river will not go across private property, but will use controlled points of access. We've got about a minute and a half left. If you could just, all, just quickly look over your shoulder and look at the dam, which looks so different from what it did just, uh, gee, a few hours ago. Um, what, to, what went through your minds? What were your emotions as you uh, saw the backhoe work and the river flow? Margaret? I saw a river coming back to life after 162 years. And if you look at the breach now, it looks like a river. And that's terribly exciting after a decade of discussion to see this come to reality and to see the beginning of the rebirth of the Kennebec River. Laura? I thought about the Atlantic salmon that uh, go up to the dam and turn around and run up Bond Brook because there isn't anywhere else to go. And I uh, thought of the moment when those salmon can actually pass this dam for the first time in 162 years and what that represents. Um, they're, they're really a symbol to me um, of having seen them hang out under the, the, the bridge down there, uh, a symbol of uh, what needs to happen and what can happen for this river. And Evan Rickard, I know, I know, I'm sure there must have been a sigh of relief that the works, that are part of the works over, but uh, what about the well, rest? Well, you know, I, I, I thought of history and of the workers in these mills um, who uh, depended on this dam, uh, French Canadians who came down 201 to help build it and to work in the mills and hoped that if they were here today, that they would approve. Okay. Thank you all very much. We'll have, we'll, get you together a year from now and see what's changed. That'd Thank be you. great. Okay. Thanks, thank Tom. You. That's our program. Thanks to our guests for joining us. We also want to thank Bob Jackson and the people at Tree Free Fiber for allowing us to use their plant site for our program today. We will continue to follow this issue and we hope you will too. I'm Don Carrigan. Thanks for joining us. Good night for Maine March. <laughs>